Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner tutorials. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting into the deeper dive of controller in order to understand that what exactly is the basic configuration required in order to prepare a scenario for performance testing. How exactly you can configure that, how, what number of users will run, how exactly they will initiate and run the test and also how long they will be running the test. In fact, we'll be looking at these things in the upcoming tutorials in more detail while practically running them. But here we will be understanding the basic understanding required in order to operate these options as a part of the controller. And of course, there is something very important when it comes to controller as we have two different types of scenarios. The one is manual scenario and the second is goal-oriented scenario. So this difference will be understood today with details also added about the load generator configuration that how do we configure the load generator agents to apply that desired amount of load on a given scenario. So let's explore all these detailed information in a little quite lengthier tutorial today with more and more ease of understanding and performing a performance test in controller. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be continuing ahead with the controller with some hands-on to understand how exactly we can create a scenario and set up the load generators as a part of the controller. In this particular tutorial, we will also target understanding between manual and goal-oriented scenario, selecting scripts for the scenario, setting up the load generator, and how to distribute the load among the script. In order to get started, the very first window when you launch controller is what you see is to select a new scenario. As mentioned earlier in our previous tutorial, it's not mandatory that you really want to show up at the startup. If you disable this checkbox, you may go to file option to start with a new scenario as well. For example, if by mistake I click on cancel, you can always go to file and click on new to get this window. So it's not really mandatory to show that it's startup, but if in case you're working always on the existing scripts, then you can disable this. But if you're every time working on creating a new scenario, this pop-up will be very helpful to save your time. Now, the very first thing what we are getting started is the select scenario type. Like we have two different types of scenarios. Number one is manual scenario and number two is the goal-oriented scenario. In manual scenario, we basically have the configuration options to set up the scenario like how many users will be initializing, how many users will be running, and how they will be initializing and running. Now, when we talk about how they will be initializing and running, it basically means that whether they will run simultaneously or in interval. When we say simultaneously, it means that it is invoking all the users together. Whereas so interval stands for that you can define the number of users who will launch and run in certain period of time. For example, five users every 15 seconds. So this is where we get the freedom to customize our scenario which we want to run and the load will be applied on those scenarios accordingly. Whereas on the other hand, when we talk about the goal-oriented scenario, here the scenario will be more of a defining the goal to be achieved at the end of the day. In manual scenario, the goal will be calculated based on the scenario created by you and the outcomes will be defined to you in the analysis window. Whereas in goal-oriented scenario, you first set up the expectation in form of goal that what do you want to achieve as a part of this execution. For example, 100 hits per second or the response time should be less than 5 seconds or any such thing which you may have as per your goal parameters. So you define the goal as expected value and the load runner automatically creates scenarios to meet that goal in the defined timeline. So the timeline will be defined by you that how long would you need in order to do that job. For example, let me just quickly show you the difference between the same. For example, let's go to the manual scenario and pick up a script here, add to it and click on OK. Now look at the overview of the manual scenario of the controller. The difference can be observed right at the design view. So let me just come to this design tab here and you see that there's on the top, of course, the selection of the script. On the right, you have SLA and this is something which is important on the left hand side again, the global schedule, which basically allows you to initialize that what is the condition. If I double click on this, I find that initialize all the users simultaneously, initialize one user or may say 10 user 
every 15 seconds. So here it is in three numbers that is R, minute and seconds. And initialize vUser just before it runs will follow the instructions provided in the start vUser. So however you design the start vUser condition, it will automatically be applied for the initialization as well. Now the second thing is of course to move to the next one which is the start vUser and it also has the similar option. Now here the first of all you can define the number of users which are required for execution. For example, I can have up to 10,000 users or maybe more. Depending on your license you can run this or define this particular value. Right now just let us keep on the 10. Now again the two options remain the same. That is either you want them to run simultaneously or you want them to run interval. Now simultaneously basically means that all the 10 users will start running together and interval means endurance where endurance will definitely stand for that 10 users or just say 2 users every 15 seconds. So now if the initialization condition is provided as the uh, 10 users initialize together but start the user 2 every 15 seconds. So what exactly initializes? Initialize refers to executing the user in it. If you remember from VUGen again, we have discussed about the VUSER init. Now VUSER init is an action where we generally capture the launch and login event of the application or the transaction. Now how do you want users to launch the application and login into that? Whereas the start VUSER is the part action in your VUGen script. And similarly the stop VUSER is the part VUSER end in your actions of VUGen script. So I can actually determine the conditions for each of these action that is vUser init as initialize, action as start vUser and stop vUser as vU end. So I can define independently that if they want to start simultaneously, sorry, initialize simultaneously, but want to run in interval and again stop together. So it's up to you, whatever scenario you want to try with, you can actually combine them in different combinations and run a scenario. Now, as you are getting the options to customize, you also get the option to customize the duration. The duration basically allows you to define that how long do you want to run this test. That means when the users work on the action that is start vUser, how long this execution should go. Is it for seconds, minutes, hours or days even. If you want, you can run it for multiple days as well. That would be again completely your need of the execution. As far as you need it for certain duration of time, including number of days, you can define that here. The only difference between these two options here is, if I go for run until completion, it will switch to basic schedule. Which basically means that the number of iterations defined in VUGen for that particular script using the run logic option will be executed and the VUSERs will be terminated. For example, if in my VUGen script I have already given the runtime settings as 3 iterations, it will just run for 3 times and stop. All the VUSERs will terminate after 3 iterations. Whereas this second option is duration dependent, not iteration. No matter what number of iteration you have defined in VUGen, VUGen script, in selecting the second option, it will be completely time dependent. And the user will continue to repeat the iterations till the time gets exhausted. So it will be three days, five minutes as of now, based on our setting, which we don't want to do. So I'll just set it up to zero. Now, you can definitely apply all the settings for all the four steps and press apply or press OK to apply the changes. Right now, I'm just pressing cancel because I'm not going to run a test right now. Also to add, of course, you will find here on the top, if you want to include more uh, scripts here. For example, initially you may have imported only one script. But what if I want to distribute my load? That means there might be 50 users and who are going to use different activities on the application. It's not always mandatory that if you have an application like Booking.com or you have an application like uh, Flipkart, not everyone is actually shopping. Some of them are busy returning the product. Some of them are looking for hotels in Booking.com. Some of them are looking for flights. Some of them are looking for buses. A lot of many other things, right? So you may record scripts for different activities which can be performed by a user and call those scripts here. How to call the other scripts in VueGen? Sorry, controller. Just drop down here and select the next set of scripts. So just click on this and say OK. Let's click on this and say OK. That simple. Now if you see, the load is automatically getting distributed to the scripts. Why? Because in the previous window, we also had a checkbox right below the manual scenario which is to select automatic distribution of the load equally. So right now if you see 
the load is equally distributed among the three scripts. If I call another one script here, for example, script 6, I will have 25% on each. Now, let's see how to configure a load generator. Load generator is basically your server which will be applying back load to your scenario. And this is just the load runner agents which you are already provided with. So my server name is localhost which will automatically pop up. In case in your case this does not pop up, you just have to click on add and name the server as localhost and press OK. It will automatically detect because your server name is localhost by default. Press OK to select for all the cases. And just press drop down and OK, drop down and OK. So now all the load generators have been configured. Basically, it is just one uh, load generator which is going to apply 25% load on each of the script. Now this is how you configure the load generator for applying the load on a particular scenario. So put the entire thing together is what you call it as a load runner or controller scenario. Now this is the interface what you get when you talk about the manual scenario. Let's try looking at a different scenario that is goal oriented. How it exactly it will be different. So click on new and say no to it and this time you pick up goal oriented scenario. But did you observe this is the option which I was talking to that is use the percentage mode to distribute the V users among the script. That is what the 25% was. If I disable this I can manually put that 3 users here, 5 users here, 20 users here like that. So it's up to you whether you want to give manual or automatic percentage distribution. So if you check this it will distribute automatically. If you uncheck this you have to manually put it. So let's go to goal oriented scenario and see a quick difference that how exactly manual is different from goal oriented. So now you saw that manual scenario allows you to design the scenario but in goal oriented you will be asked for the goal. Look at the difference here. This left hand panel is completely uneditable. Of course you do have an edit option here but can you see it says edit scenario goal. You can actually edit the scenario goal here. So goal profile name goal is 30 virtual users. Scenario duration is 30 minutes and load behavior reach target virtual user using automatic ramp up. Now let's click on edit scenario goal. What options do we have here? Number one you can definitely select a profile name which you may have even created a new one as well here or you can rename the existing one. So these are just the names. These are not your goals. The goal is actually at the bottom. Like is it related to virtual users? Is it related to hits per second? Is it related to trans transactions per second? transaction response time or it is related to pages per minute. You can make use of all these or any one of these goals in order to define your goal. For example, let me go for hits per second. So what's your threshold or what is your goal to be achieved? For example, I want to check at what point the scenario can be reached by 200 hits per second. Okay, My goal is to check that in what scenario or what conditions my scenario can reach up to 100 hits per second. So you can define the minimum of this and maximum of this as V users like a lower boundary and upper boundary. Of course I know that 30 to 60 users may not be able to reach 100. So I can do something really more interesting. Say that the 50 to 150 or 200. So I always define something which is feasible enough to be achieved by the scenario. So I define it here as 50 to 200 and don't worry about the upper limit. As far as the goal is achieved it will automatically standby. It will automatically stop executions and stay on hold for that many number of minutes what you have defined here. Okay. So as soon as the target is achieved which is 100 hits per second it will run another 30 seconds with that particular scenario where it holds to check for the stability because many of times it happens that when your scenario is achieved it reaches peak and the system can crash. So I need to check the stability at this point of time. So you can also define it for a longer duration by putting it as one hour or maybe longer than that. Now what else? If target cannot be reached, what should I do? So I can define a condition here that stop scenario and save the result. Continue scenario without reaching the goal as well. Which sounds a little stupid but of course to see any kind of abrupt, abrupt behaviors of the system you can actually do this. You can run it for three to four hours of time and see that what exactly happened. Why it was not able to achieve the goal. Was that the V users? Was that the transaction? Or what was that the resource utilization like your RAM processor and many other things. So sometimes we do make use of this option as well to identify the diagnosis part and receive notifications at any point of time if you get this done or you don't get this done. 
So what exactly will happen, the load behavior will tell you. Like how to ramp up automatic, or you can define reach target number of hits per second every two minutes or just two minutes and step up by 20 hits per second every two minutes. So it will just add up more users, the interval what you define, or if you set to automatic, the load runner will automatically keep adding users after 50, like an interval of 60, 70, 80, to see that if they all can achieve 100 hits per second. If in case not achieved, it will continue till 200 to achieve that. So if in case it achieves, it will stop there and continue for the next 30 minutes to run. If not, it will just come back and tell you this option that do you want to continue or do you want to stop? So this is how the goal scenario, goal oriented scenario will work where you don't get the provision to define how they initialize, how they run, how they stop and no duration. Here it is completely dependent on the goal which you have defined here. So that's the major difference between uh, manual and goal oriented scenario. So let's go back to this and also look at the, sorry, look at the control panel here. The script part remains the same. The SLA remains the same. The graph will be completely based on the scenario what is provided by you. Now you can also run the difference between, a major difference between manual scenario and goal oriented scenario here is that you can start the scenario right here in the design window instead of going to the run window, which is quite similar exactly the same as per the manual scenario. Only the differences in the design tab. Also, you can see the generators which you have, which is your local host. There is only one generator available. You can anytime see that. You can look into the network issues. You can look at the add script, remove script, runtime settings, what you have used in ViewGen. So it will just launch your runtime settings and you can see that there are three iterations with the script. So at any point of time, you can open this and see that. Similarly, you can look at the details of it. You can view the script. This will open your view gen and show the script to you and service virtualization. So these are some of the great options which you can find as a difference between uh, the manual and the goal editor scenario. Now, of course, we make use of both of them as per the need of the execution and performance test. So make sure that you have a good understanding of both of them and make use of the desired one at the right time. Also, just quickly to check, now we have got everything here. So you see now what exactly manual scenario is, what exactly this use percentage mode option is. You know what is goal oriented scenario. These are completely dependent on the protocols and the licenses what you may have. Not all of you will see these options as far as your licenses related to that. Plus here you have the provision of importing the test from any of the sources, like adding directly from what you have saved locally, or you can import it from outside. You can go ahead and record a new script and import it from ALM as well. So I think that gives you a good idea of what exactly load generator is, what are the types of scenario here, and what exactly is the overall difference between the goal and objective of that uh, uh, manual scenario. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.